So this is a video that unfortunately I've made before two times and I'm here again to tell you guys that I had a miscarriage. For those of you who follow us on social media, you already know this. I shared about it the day that it happened, which was this past Monday, October 8th. And don't really know what there is to say. Whew, man. Um, I wish I could say that it's easier, but it's not. Having gone through this two times prior, I feel like this one really hurt in a way that the other two didn't. And it's probably because I was further along and it's probably because of how it all happened. Um, but it was very difficult. And I want to share the story of you with you about this baby and how this baby came to be because I think it's important that part of this story is honoring this little one that unfortunately I'll never get to hold this side of heaven. So I found out on September 7th, 6th or 7th, that I was pregnant and did, we weren't trying to get pregnant with this baby. Um, we weren't preventing, we haven't really prevented um, since we had Isabel actually just been kind of cautious about when the time of the month happens. Um, but I haven't been on any type of birth control since Isabel. And a lot of that had to do with the um, infertility side of what we've dealt with and just what I felt was the right choice for us. Um, but we were not actively trying to have a baby by any means. And so when I took the pregnancy test, I honestly thought that it was going to say that I wasn't pregnant. I thought that because of my history with irregular cycles, that I was just kind of taking longer for my period to start. So I bought pregnancy tests and it was late at night, like seven o'clock and I was getting the girls ready for bed. I had just put Isabel to bed. I went to the bathroom, took a pregnancy test um, while Emma was getting ready to bed to go to bed and it said I was pregnant and it came up right away and I was literally so shocked I genuinely didn't think I was pregnant which is why I had taken it in the middle of trying to put the kids to sleep because I was just flabbergasted that it came up and it said that we were pregnant because we weren't trying and for you guys who know our story of infertility um, and and how long it took us to get pregnant with Isabel, never in my wildest dreams did I think we would just somehow get pregnant on our own by not trying. I always figured it would be a concerted effort and track all of those things. And so when I saw those two little pink lines come up, it just made my heart sore that this was happening and it had happened and it was an amazing surprise that was just one of the best things you could ever think and hope to happen and I came and I told Scott and he didn't believe it either and we were excited and nervous and surprised but just overwhelmed that it just had happened on its own and um, we made the decision to tell just my in-laws and um, Emma so Emma knew about the baby and she was very excited and we wanted to wait until I had had an ultrasound before we told anyone else. I had my first OB appointment and everything looked really good with my blood work and um, you know, everything looked just like it was supposed to. We were due sometime mid-May. And um, my, my OB doctor went ahead and scheduled me for an ultrasound, an early ultrasound because of my history of miscarriage the ultrasound that I was gonna be somewhere about eight weeks um, based on my last menstrual cycle. So on October 1st, I went to the doctors and I had an ultrasound and um, the ultrasound was okay. 
um, the baby was measuring six weeks and one day and the gestation sac was measuring seven weeks and three days um, and that's actually this ultrasound that I have here so as you can see the baby was very small and the gestation sac was much bigger than the baby um, we were able to find a heartbeat at six weeks one day gestation it's really difficult but we could see the little flicker of the heartbeat and the um, ultrasound technician was able to actually capture the heartbeat um, but she was concerned because um, based on my last menstrual cycle I was should have been eight weeks the baby was measuring six weeks and the gestation sac was bigger um, the doctor that came in that day that looked at the ultrasound saw the little flicker of the heartbeat and said you know I want you to come back next week and we'll just hope that everything looks good we'll cross our fingers and I left that ultrasound devastated and concerned but hopeful that it was going to be okay and that week we just prayed and just trusted the Lord that everything was going to be fine on Monday I went back to have another ultrasound done and the ultrasound technician um, found the baby my gestation sac was measuring eight weeks and the baby was measuring six weeks and three days and the minute that she um, found the baby I could see there wasn't a heartbeat she looked at me and said, I really, you know, I don't see a heartbeat. I want a doctor to come in and look at this. So the doctor came in and, and he confirmed and he said, I'm sorry, I don't see a heartbeat. And I was there by myself. Um, Scott couldn't be there. He was bringing the girls to school. And um, in that moment, my whole world just came crashing down. And it devastated me more than the other babies I lost because with the other miscarriages, um, you know, it's very early along, four or five weeks, and it just happened on its own. But sitting in that doctor's office and seeing this baby on the screen and seeing, seeing them and knowing they were gone, it hurt in a whole new way, like in a whole fresh new way. And having to sit in that doctor's office alone and wait for an OB doctor to be able to talk to me just felt like an eternity of waiting and painfulness and um, fear of what, what do we do next? Because with the other babies, my body just naturally started the miscarriage process, which is difficult but having to sit there after hearing the most devastating news and then have all of these different options presented at you it's just overwhelming to say the least it really truly is and um everybody was very kind and concerned and um gentle about the situation and gave me the options obviously the options were to have a dnc um, or I could wait naturally for my body to miscarry, which it will. Um, you just don't know how much time it's going to take for your body to figure out that you're not pregnant anymore. Um, or there was a medicinal option where you could take some pills that would start the miscarriage process. And for me, I felt like the best decision was to do that. Um, I know a lot of people do a DNC and I understand why. For me, it didn't feel like the right thing to do. I just didn't feel comfortable with the process. And so Scott came home and we started the process of forcing my body into miscarriage, which was gonna happen anyways. Um, and, and maybe people don't agree with that, um, but I think the process of being able to control how it happens because the baby's already gone is really important because I couldn't just sit there and wait for my body to figure it out and and just feel pregnant because your body still feels pregnant um, even though the baby's gone 
and it's awful. The process of miscarriage is awful in so many ways. And I just wanted to like emotionally get through that as quickly as we could so I could start to genuinely heal and move on. And so that's what we've done. I don't know why, why this has happened to us three times. And there's nothing wrong with me. Um, the doctors have looked at things and there's nothing wrong. It just happens. And sometimes it happens to the same person multiple times and I know these babies are in heaven with my mom, with each other. I know I'll get to see them again someday. And I'm so grateful and thankful for the two beautiful, healthy girls that I have. Because I know people sit here and walk through this path without any children in their arms. And I have two amazing little girls that God has blessed me with. But at the same time, I feel like I have a right to be sad and to grieve that I have three children in heaven that I have never gotten to hold this side of heaven. And one thing that I've allowed myself to do that I didn't allow myself to do with the others is to have a right to that pain and feel justified in the sadness that I feel. With the other two, I felt like everyone was like, you know things happen and the baby probably wouldn't have been healthy anyways and you know so on and so forth and i understand that all of those things are so real and so truthful i get it but it doesn't change the pain of grief that i have and i know i was very early in pregnancy but i was still pregnant this was still my baby and I'm never going to get to hold and see it. And so I'm allowing myself to feel all of those feelings and, and feel like I can have a right to be sad that I'm not going to have this baby. I'm so grateful for the people around us that support us. We have an amazing support system of people who have reached out to us, people I work with, people who we're friends with, um, you guys who have reached out and shown love and support this week. I have an incredible husband who loves me and cares for me and has been an incredible support system this entire week while I've gone through this process even in his sadness and his grief. Um, you know, Emma's okay. We told her about the baby and she understands and she's sad. I think her innocence shields her a lot. She doesn't quite understand the magnitude of it, but she said, it's okay, mommy. God will give us another baby and he will. And it's so like amazing that she knows that in her spirit. And she said, I'm excited to see my babies because we had the opportunity to explain to her about the other two miscarriages with this baby that we lost. And Emma said, you know, mommy, I'm so excited to go to heaven someday. And I love her for that. I love her sweetness and her tenderness because that's how I feel too. Um, we are not done with our family. We have one more baby that we desperately want and we will have. Um, I can't say that we're going to start trying right now. I really genuinely need some time to like heal my heart and feel ready to start trying again. Um, but it probably will be sooner than later. And um, I just want to say thank you, genuinely thank you for all of your love and support that you've given me and my family for those of you who have sent us messages on Facebook or Instagram and left comments and um, will leave comments on this video. We are so grateful that you're part of our family and part of this journey, um, even in the really tough times. Um, and this is a tough time and I'm not gonna hide it from you and I hope that if you're a mama who has found this video because you're suffering miscarriage, please know you're not alone and that you are okay 
to feel what you feel, to feel that sadness and that hurt and that pain. And um, I just pray that the love of Christ would just wrap and surround you in this time. Um, I'm so grateful for my Heavenly Father and for all of the things that have helped me through this time. Um, it just, I feel so loved even in the sadness of all of this. I genuinely feel very loved and I know that God has a plan and that what the enemy has meant for evil, he will turn around for good and we will have another beautiful, beautiful rainbow baby like Isabel. I know we'll have it, we will. He will redeem this. This very ugly, very hurtful thing and bring something so beautiful from it. Anyways, um, that's it. I love you guys. Thank you again for all of your love and support. And um, we'll be back soonish with some new, happier things for you. I'm sorry that this is sad news, but it is real life. And yeah, so thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.